Eric back with the naturopath. Thanks for coming back. I'd be listening to a lot of people out there asking me for resources. In particular, what I got here, it's a one pager. I like one pages. You know, just the pertinent or the relevant information on one sheet of paper without all the blah, blah, all the waffle and stuff like that. So cut out all the junk. We just got one page of information, which I call the complete candida diet food shopping list. Okay, Everything on the one page. Now, it's in color but because I'm too tight to spend money on printing cartridges and stuff. I just print black and white, but this looks pretty cool in color. Okay. So these headers here are, I think, in red, like in a nice color. So if you have a look here, you'll see different types of foods recommended. Okay, brassicas. If you look on that one side, other vegetables, the alliums, plant sources of protein. What we got down the bottom there, we got the fruits. So this is basically a distillation of the information that is in the Candida Crusher book. Okay, over 700 pages, a lot of information in there. Too much for most people. So lots of people requested a one pager, and that's what this is. This is how I eat. This is how I've eaten for a long time. This is how I like my patients to eat these kind of foods. So is it paleo? No. Is it low carb? No. Is it high carb? No. This is a sensible, healthy approach to eating. Well, rather, you know, whether you've got candida or a gut problem, it doesn't matter what you've got. This is the kind of um, foods that you want to be looking at to get that gut in really good shape. You can spend a lot of time on YouTube and go through, you know, you could listen to podcasts, you could look and uh, you could listen to many different doctors online. A lot of them have got um, variants and different slants on this type of eating approach. Be very careful of people who push hardcore one line, like you've got to eat all meat or you've got to eat all vegetables or you've got to eat all fruits and everything else is like toxic crap, you know, so be careful. These are people a bit like the, I call them the Bible thumpers or the evangelistic people. You know, stand up and say, if you don't pray, you're going to go to hell. You know, so sometimes we get these sort of extremists in, you know, in nutritional realm as well. So I've never believed in extremes when it comes to therapy, when it comes to diet, exercise or anything. I always follow the middle ground. And so let's go through this list a little bit. Probably my favorite of the vegetables would be the brassicas. We're talking broccoli, cauliflower. You know, we're talking Brussels sprouts. These sorts of foods are extremely nutrient dense foods. Now, nobody would argue that brassicas are bad for you. So, wonderful food to eat. So, if you're not used to eating a lot of brassica foods like I am, start very slowly, just a small amount, regularly over time. You might get a bit of gas production, you know, steam them lightly, put them in casseroles or cook them. If you can grow your own brassicas like I do, it's well worth doing. I really get concerned these days about glyphosate or this crap called Roundup, these sprays, these, you know, these weedicides, these things they spray around to kill weeds. They get into the water, they get into the soil. So if you can get organic, it's definitely preferable. So the research certainly points towards brassicas as being some of the most nutrient dense foods you can eat and particularly good for what they do to innate liver detoxification and providing, providing the right kind of fiber for your gut to build really good levels of beneficial bacteria, which in, can, which in turn confer benefits by boosting your immune system up. So people who eat foods like this tend to have a better immune function than people who don't, right? So other vegetables, <clears throat> artichokes, asparagus, beets, celery, chard, cucumber, I mean, it's all there. Um, the alliums would be probably also in my top five of favorite vegetables. We're talking onions, we're talking garlic, leeks, wonderfully easy foods to grow pests hate them so if pests don't really like munching on a food it usually means it's got something in it that's going to help you quite a lot might mean that pests don't like munching on you when you've munched that food so think about it some of our most powerful foods like garlic okay extremely powerful food it's got a fantastic ability to ward off a lot of different bugs and that's why i plant garlic often around my tomato plants and, and basil and things like that when i'm growing them Right. Also stops the dog digging everything up. So plant sources of protein, really, really important. There are lots of different types of seeds that you can incorporate, you know, different types of grains and nuts and things like that that contain viable levels of protein for your body. Lentils, again, one of my favorites. We make up a lot of lentil dishes in this house. So cheap and good, as my mum used to say. 
She was Jewish, so she always said cheap and good. Now, lentils are cheap and they're good. So I'm telling you guys out there, eating healthy food doesn't have to come at a stupid high price tag. It doesn't cost tens of thousands of dollars a year, okay, to eat lentils and stuff like that. When I traveled in India and I did my postgraduate studies in, in, the, in the early 90s, I noticed how many people I couldn't believe were just living on rice, tomatoes, and legumes, you know, like lentils. That's basically what a lot of people just live on. You know, maybe some spinach thrown in, lots of pure water, no Big Macs, no Dr. Peppers. This is like healthy food, right? Anyone can eat lentils, start slow. You're not going to be chowing into a pound of lentils a day in the first week because you're going to get a lot of gas and bloating and you're not going to feel good. No different from taking a lady from Calcutta or Bombay into New York and giving her two liters of Coca-Cola to drink. She's probably going to get sick, not used to drinking that kind of toxic crap. So fruits, as you know, I'm a huge fruit fan. I love eating fruit. In fact, our yard is peppered with fruit at the moment. We've got stone fruit galore. We grow all these trees, nectarines, peaches, plums, apricots. We've got all the apples coming through now. We've got cherries, we've got avocados, everything. These are fantastic foods to eat. Avocados in particular are probably my favorite fruit. We go over 400 avocados away from our yard during the COVID lockdown period earlier this year. All my neighbors were getting avocados off me. I wasn't allowed to leave the property, but I would sneak next door and leave two in the letterbox. And you know, that's the great thing about when you grow food, you can support a lot of people around you. It's wonderful. So I highly recommend eating avocado. Now you may not like avocado like a lot of people, but I can guarantee you if you start very, 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 very small amounts, tiny amounts and experiment slowly but surely, the palate will change and you will get to like avocado. Superior food. Animal proteins. As you know, I definitely eat meat, but my favorite meats now is things like herring, mackerel, anchovies. Um, I like fish that are rich in oil. I like eel as well. I eat those kinds of foods. I like eggs, organic eggs. So red meat, yeah, I do eat a bit of red meat, but not much at all anymore. Preferring more to go to fish protein and egg protein. I think to me, it, it, I just feel better on those proteins. So try and find out what kind of primary protein that makes you feel good. Is it turkey? Is it organic chicken? Is it fish? You know, but I would discourage you from eating a 16 ounce steak two, three times a week because I don't really think it's good for the tummy and for the bell, right? But that's your choice. Venison's another really good food. We have a lot of deer in New Zealand and venison's a wonderful primary protein to eat too. Nuts and seeds. We have containers in our pantry with all sorts of nuts. So almonds, hazelnuts, cashews, um, pecans or pecans, whatever you call them. Brazil nuts. I eat three to four Brazil nuts every single day because of the boron and the selenium content. So there's a lot to be said. The other tip I like giving people is to eat more pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. These three are fantastic foods to add to salads, to cook meals and things like that. And if you want to, like I do beforehand, you can just get some pumpkin seeds, for example, and cook them in some tamari in a cast iron skillet. And you'll find that when they cool down, you put them in a container, wonderful to sprinkle on top of something. But my favorite is sesame seeds. I get a pound of those. I usually put them in a really fine colander, rinse them, because if you don't, they pop everywhere when you heat them. I did that, it's a bloody mess, All right? So rinse them carefully, drain the water out, cast iron skillet, until you start hearing a little bit of pop, pop, popping sound, then you get probably in a pound, you would probably put a tablespoon, a good level tablespoon of sea salt, a good sea salt, stir that through. Keep stirring and mixing it and mixing it over the moderate heat until you smell that wonderful aroma. And then when 50% of it brownish, transfer those to a bowl, I've got a little um, Japanese porcelain bowl called a surabachi. Now just give it a bit of a grind and all those oils get liberated. Now I tell you, that pound, when I put that on the table around food and I've got people here, it's gone. People just grab it by the handful. It, it's almost insane how nice it tastes. So these are wonderful things that you can do to add to your diet to give the vegetables more flavor, more texture. So small things like that. Grains, pastas and noodles. We eat buckwheat noodles here. We eat brown rice. I eat all sorts of different types of rice. 
I usually mix different spices and herbs through the rice. For example, cinnamon, clove, star anise seed, uh, black cumin. These will all get mixed through some rice and then I'll have a, a steaming absorption method. And it smells fantastic and it tastes great. These are the things that can keep your gut clean. When you start cooking with lots of spices, lots of herbs, it keeps the tummy clean. Look around the world where the equator is and the hottest regions. They use the hottest spices. They use the spiciest things. You think they do that per chance? They do it for a reason. And why do you think? Where do you think the highest concentration of yeast and parasites and bugs are? You've got it around the equator. Right? And to me, that's why people have always eaten that type of food. Not to like make your food a bit spicy. They don't do it like that. They do it because they knew through observations over generations that these foods stop people getting dodgy tummies. Right? So if you've got a dodgy tummy, lean towards this type of equatorial eating and cooking. You go to the Caribbean, you go to Tahiti, you go to any place where it's hot and you'll find what I'm saying is correct. They even combine spices with fruits. Now, you tell someone that in LA, they think that you're on another planet, right? What else is I going to talk about this list? Um, dairy alternatives, of course, because milk's not really that fantastic from cows unless it's sort of turned into yogurt, you know, as some sort of cultured food. Uh, but many people have hemp milk now, or oat milk. Just be careful of the added sugar content because many of these foods are crap. I go to the supermarkets, I pick up these Tetra packs and you know, square boxes with the milks in them and you can actually read the numbers and you think, oh my gosh, artificial sugars. So just be wary of what you buy. Fresh herbs and spices, we grow lots of different herbs and we use a lot of spices. I think this is one of the key things to tie a lot of fruits and vegetables together and to give them that power that you're looking for to be very medicinal in the digestive system. Um, seaweed, of course, is another one of my favorite foods. I've got a marine fish tank, which I'll show you guys one day, and I've got a couple of big fish in it that eat one big sheet of nori per day. So what you know the nori that you roll up and make sushi from? So, yeah, but we use different seaweeds. We use wakame, uh, we use ajiki, we use nori, um, there's kombu. Um, yeah, they all have their own reasons why we use them. If I, for example, would boil a potato or a boil a vegetable, which I don't do that much, I would put some kombu with it. Now, um, hijiki is a nice black stranded seaweed, which I love to usually boil just for about five minutes. And then I'll often I have, I'll have a, a pan with the seaweed in it boiling, and then I'll have a, a pot on top with holes in it, and it's steaming. So you get the added flavor. And then, you know, you can actually drain that water. You can even use that water, of course, for soup or, or casserole and to combine the hijiki with the broccoli, really good. Okay. Seaweed's gonna give you a nice hair and nice skin. And it's also great for the immune system. It supports the thyroid function too. So really, really good food. Sea vegetables, okay. Um, foods to try when the gut improves. So what you're gonna find is in my book, if you've read my book or gone through it, some people can handle these foods right off the bat. You know, they can handle them with a candida problem. Other people can't tolerate them at all until their digestion really improves. That's why there are no yes or no, 100% yes or no foods on this list. Some people may get this list and say, back out, you're full of crap. I can't eat bananas. I can't eat this. Or, That's okay. Just don't eat them then. Put them away. Maybe in three or six months, you can tolerate them again. But don't go online and tell people that bananas are toxic and they're radioactive and they kill everybody and they make you sick. And it's not true. All right. Some people can easily tolerate two bananas a day. Others can't tolerate one a week. And it's the same with pumpkin, with squash, with those type of fibery uh, vegetables. You're going to find that. But as your gut improves and is in great shape like mine, you can eat virtually any vegetable, any fruit, and you won't have any problem. All right. So the contentious foods as the gut improves carrots for some people, bananas, pineapple, sweet potato, which is probably up in my top five. I love sweet potato. Um, and the other thing, be careful of is sourdough. Some people have no problem with sourdough. One of the most important things on this list is the fermentable and cultured foods. So this has been part of my life since I've been a kid and I'm 60 now. So if you can make a cultured or fermented food a small part of your life and then gradually you know, as the years go by, once a day, if you can, add a little bit of yogurt to your meal, add a little bit of sauerkraut, 
and build that up until it becomes like a condiment that you regularly have. Because of course, when you regularly do things, you get the benefit from them. So having sauerkraut in a mall, you know, because it's like the, the fashionable thing to do isn't gonna do much for you. But having sauerkraut or yogurt at home, making it is a totally different ball game. It immerses you into good health. And that's what I like people to do. And that's what this channel's all about. So if you want this, it's free. It's cheap and it's good. Click on the link below and it's yours. And as usual, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a fantastic 2021. Thank you so much.